This is going to be the world's tallest dam, the Rogun Dam, standing at 335 meters and capable of generating 3,600 megawatts of power. But it's not being built by China, Saudi Arabia, or any global superpower. Instead, it's being built by a country most people have never even heard of, Tajikistan. One of the poorest countries in the world, struggling with economic instability and constant energy blackouts. Yet, this dam could be a game changer. It has the potential to transform Tajikistan from a country that's been experiencing energy blackouts to a country that's not only energy independent, but selling energy to its neighbors. But as the dam rises, so do challenges. Political instability, environmental risks, and economic strain have caused significant delays to the construction. Despite all the challenges, Tajikistan is still moving ahead and pouring billions into it. But why is one of the poorest countries spending more than half of its GDP to build the world's biggest dam? Tucked away in Central Asia, Tajikistan is a land of towering mountains and deep valleys, where rugged peaks stretch as far as the eye can see. Here, the roads twist through rugged, barren mountain passes, and much of the land remains untouched by modern industry to this day. In fact, 93% of the country's land area is covered by mountains, and this labyrinth is known as the Pamir Mountains, or more popularly known as the Roof of the World dominating the landscape, which makes farming difficult and development even harder. But within this harsh terrain, Tajikistan holds one defining asset. Because here lies the inception of fast, untamed rivers that start from literally the top of the world and cut through deep valleys into Tajikistan. And within these valleys flows the mighty Vaksh River. It slices through the entire country, dropping thousands of feet in elevation creating perfect conditions for hydroelectric power. And when a force of nature this powerful exists, the question becomes, why not use it? And Tajikistan planned to do so, almost 75 years ago. A plan was proposed back in the 1950s when the country was under the regime of the Soviet Union. The idea for a massive dam was part of the Soviet Union's ambition to constantly industrialize all of its member countries. This was their way of becoming the global superpower back then. The Soviets saw Tajikistan as a gold mine for hydroelectric energy, thanks to its immense rivers and massive drops in elevation. So, they devised an ambitious plan to build not just one, but two colossal dams along the Vaksh River. The first being the Nurek Dam here, standing at 300 meters, making it one of the tallest in the world. But the Nurek Dam was merely a stepping stone. The true crown jewel of this ambitious plan was the Rogan Dam, a project designed to be even bigger, more powerful, and to stand at a record-shattering 335 meters, making it the tallest dam on Earth. To put this into perspective, the current tallest dam in the world is the Jinping Yi Dam in Sichuan, China, which stands at 305 meters, a full 30 meters shorter than the planned Rogan Dam. Imagine a colossal wall of stone and concrete, towering taller than the Eiffel Tower, stretching across a vast valley like a modern-day Great Wall. Behind this monumental structure lies a massive reservoir, capable of holding 13.3 cubic kilometers of water, nearly the volume of Yellowstone Lake in the United States, and enough to fill more than 5 million Olympic swimming pools. When fully operational, the Rogan Dam is projected to generate 3,600 megawatts of power, equivalent to the output of three nuclear reactors. This engineering marvel doesn't stop there. The dam's crest spans 660 meters, and its construction involves a staggering 75.5 million cubic meters of rock. The reservoir created by the dam will cover an area of approximately 110 square kilometers, providing not only energy, but also water for irrigation and other needs. The underground powerhouse is designed to house six turbines, each with a capacity of 600 megawatts, harnessing the river's flow to supply electricity to the region. The planning for the Rogan Dam began in 1976, setting the stage for the next big leap in Tajikistan's energy future. At the same time, workers were putting the final touches on Nurek Dam, which would be completed by 1980. 
One dam was finished, but another, even bigger, was just beginning. However, this is when the controversies really began. You see, the Rogan was not built on a plain stretch of land or the wilderness. It was to be built about 120 kilometers east of the capital Dushanbe in southern Tajikistan, where native people had already been living for generations. And now, these people would have to resettle, either willingly or by force. This was just the surface of the issue. The Rogan was such a behemoth in size that it would not only flood the neighboring village, but a lot of generations old graveyards too. This hit the Tajiks on a sentimental level, and soon after, protests started erupting. The protest had a simple notion, to have the Rogan built but just a little smaller. And the protests weren't just local. It caught the eye of almost every international journal at the time. And one news reporter in the 80s even referred to the project as gigantomania, a term mocking its excessive size and seemingly reckless ambition. But despite the controversy, Tajikistan's leaders pressed forward, and a bright future was on the horizon, but it would come at a heavy cost. In 1991, the Soviet Union collapsed after years of economic struggles, political chaos, and growing independence movements. And Tajikistan finally stepped into a new independent era, but their independence would come at a heavy price, a nationwide civil war. This civil war would effectively pause the Rogan project, but this was just the first blow. During this time, a flood wiped out almost all the tunneling and heavy infrastructure that was already being built for the project. It would seem at the time that nature and fate were against the Rogan. By 1997, the civil war ended, and it was a moment of relief for the Tajikistan people. But what followed after were moments of financial struggle for the country. The country was left in economic ruin, with a partly constructed project that would cost almost half or more of its national GDP to resume and complete. But then, in 2004, something changed. The country was handed a lifeline, and hope rekindled for the Rogan Dam once again. Amidst all the uncertainty, stepped in a conglomerate that was willing to invest in this behemoth of a project, a Russian aluminum company named Rusal. They struck a deal with Tajikistan to help complete the Rogan Dam that would work in their favor. Since these were businessmen and not politicians, their ambitions were calculated and strategic. They proposed that the height of the dam be lowered to 285 meters as opposed to the proposed 335 meters, which as a result would generate 33% less energy. Also, Rusal wanted the dam to be built using concrete, while Tajik engineers wanted to use earth and rock, believing it would better withstand seismic activity. These differences, among many others, resulted in Rusal cutting ties and abandoning the project again in 2007. With no investors left, the Tajik government took matters into its own hands. They raised $185 million through a widely advertised campaign of selling shares to the public, or so it would seem. At the time, 60% of the population lived below the official poverty line. But what the government was secretly doing was forcing the public sector workers to donate a month's salary to finance the Rogan project. This move dissuaded potential investors. And if financial troubles weren't enough already, in 2012, their neighbors Uzbekistan came knocking with a threat of war. It wasn't jealousy that made Uzbekistan uncomfortable, and it sure wasn't hydroelectric power that made the Uzbeks threaten war. You see, their threats boiled down to the Vaksh River. For better understanding, the Vaksh is a major tributary to the Amudarya in Uzbekistan and makes up for 25% of its water flow. Building the Rogan Dam could affect the Amudarya and subsequently Uzbekistan's booming cotton agriculture. So in 2012, Uzbekistan's then-president Islam Karimov made a passive-aggressive war threat. However, Tajikistan remained undeterred. Through a mix of share sales, government bonds, and private loans, Tajikistan finally secured enough funding to restart construction. And in 2016, President Ramon made it official, not with a speech, but by personally driving a bulldozer to block the Vox River. The project's value was set at $3.9 billion, with Italy's Salini Impregulo taking on a $184 million contract to lead construction. Then, in 2018, the tensions with Uzbekistan miraculously faded, 
Under new leadership, Uzbekistan hinted at joining the project after assurance from the Tajiks that their water interests would stay unharmed. By late 2018 and 2019, two massive hydroelectric units were successfully commissioned, marking a historic milestone. The Tajik government claimed that once fully operational, Rogan would provide affordable and reliable energy to 10 million people, finally fulfilling its long-standing promise. It looked like momentum was finally on Tajikistan's side, but Tajikistan would once again face hurdles. Between 2020 and 2022, progress on Rogan slowed due to funding shortages, technical setbacks, and the economic impact of COVID-19. Then, in 2023, the Tajik Ministry of Energy announced that the dam's price tag had surged to almost $6.2 billion, pushing Tajikistan's finances to the brink. But money isn't the only problem. According to Al Jazeera, despite being only 25% complete, the dam has already displaced 7,000 people, with another 42,000 set to lose their homes. The dam also threatens the fragile ecosystem of the Tugay Forest of the Tigrovaya Balka, a World Heritage Site. Critics argue that Tajikistan is gambling too much on hydroelectricity, pouring billions into one dam instead of diversifying into solar energy or smaller, more manageable energy solutions. The original completion date was set for 2028, but recent estimates push it back to 2035. And like so many ambitious mega-projects, Rogan's future remains uncertain.